to the top of the battery. It's hop it off the track, but the friction in for Team USA. Danielle Grega with a team high fourth pro league goal. You've been with the team since 2017, I believe. Yep. And you were just named team captain uh, right around the start of, t of 2020. How much did that mean to you? And what, what was your reaction when you were told? I am still so incredibly honored to have that position and serve as the captain for the team right now. Um, I was like shocked when they told me just because I'm pretty young. I've only been on the team for three years, but for this team, I, that is a significant amount of time. So um, obviously I was very excited that the coaches had trust in me and the team backed me. So um, I'm really, really honored to have that position. Did your leadership approach change? Did you have a different um, style you wanted to come in with every day to practice or games? Yeah, I think always my leadership, I, wanna, I want it to stem from leading by example. So I want to show up with a good attitude every day and a work ethic that is infectious. So I think that's just kind of what I wanted to keep doing. I didn't want to become captain and completely change. I think right now, especially, especially in this rebuilding season, um, consistency is going to be a huge thing. So I think just keeping um, the young girls accountable and showing up and showing them what hard work looks like. Now, last year in the Pro League, um, you were one of the team's top scorers. You added um, another goal in one of the first games this year. Do you kind of want to take on a leadership role, being that you're now one of the top scorers? Um, I definitely would love to. I mean, I'm more, I'm not really the most vocal person there is. Um, so I kind of lead by example on the field and those sort of things. So I'm definitely not the most vocal leader on the team, but I think just, yeah, being there for those younger players who may need that help or that support is definitely important. And I'd love to do that. Another big change for you guys this year uh, was the move to play all your home games at UNC, which for you had to have been um, pretty amazing considering how, how great your career was there. You won a national championship. You were an All-American. Yes. <laughs> how, how excited were you um, when that announcement came down? And how much does that familiarity help you just in every aspect of your game? I was ecstatic when I found out we were heading to UNC because I kind of freshly graduated a year ago. So I still have friends there that could come and watch um, and just like showing everyone around like our old stomping grounds, the restaurants. It was just really a cool experience to go back there. Um, I never thought I would play at that field again. <laughs> so then to be back, it was just like, I don't know, the energy was just amazing. And um, especially to play Holland, who's the number one team in the world, uh, mm -hmm. it was such good field hockey that could be played in Karen Schellen Stadium, and I was so excited. Before this interview, I watched back your goal against New Zealand um, uh, at the beginning of the season. Can you kind of take me through that? I mean, you ran half the field and finished it all on your own. I always say, like, I just try to play to my strengths, and I think, I mean, I feel like I'm a fast player, so... I've always been told by so many coaches just run around them. And I think that's something <laughs> I stick to a lot. And it doesn't always have to be fancy. It doesn't always have to be pretty. You just got to, you just got to do what you got to do. And I think that goal definitely um, represented who I am as a player. And I want to ask about the Olympic qualifiers um, at the end of 2019. Can you kind of take me through that second game and that insane comeback that you guys almost pulled off? What was the mood like? on the bench each time you guys scored and got closer and closer? The most fun and emotional and then heartbreaking game I've ever played in my entire life. And I think even the night before we got together as a team and the mood was kind of like obviously down a little bit. But then mm -hmm. we, we met as a team and we were like, look, we have a mountain to climb and all we can do is just start climbing it. That's literally all we can do. Or we fold. And right. the team never for a second even gave that a thought. So going out there, we just like put it all out on the field, trusted our instincts, and I think played the best hockey that we were able to play in my three years that I've been on the national team. It was an intense game. <laughs> um, we, I mean, we had nothing to lose in the going, going into that second game. So we were just like, we're going to put it all out there. And I think it really showed who we were as a team then with those players and that coaching staff. And I think, um, yeah, it was just so much adrenaline. I think each time we scored those goals, I was like, is this actually happening right now? <laughs> it was a little surreal. So I think it was just so much adrenaline running and just so many emotions.
you could feel the energy in the air. Like everyone, I think we were really excited, but it was one of those feelings where like, you don't want to kind of jump out of your seat because the game isn't over. Right. So it was excitement. It was a mix of excitement and pressure because now it's zero zero. We did it, but it's not done yet. I think if had there not been a halftime, we would have won the game. <laughs> Honestly, it's, that's a great they point. Just let us keep going. Yeah. <laughs> and not take that 10 minute break. But I mean, that's all learning experience. Are the 2024 games kind of like the big picture goal for you personally and for kind of the team as a whole is like the big like, this is what we want to build toward the, like each year? Yeah, absolutely. I think after we didn't qualify, kind of our mindset shifted to, okay, now we have five years to train for Paris. So I think we have an opportunity to get two extra years on these teams that so we can train together for five years still leading to right. Paris. Yeah. But that's definitely our goal. We're also focusing on the World Cup in 2022. Every day we go out there and I train, I run here at my house with those goals in mind still. So it's keeping it in perspective. Going to the Olympics is definitely an individual goal and a personal goal that I've always had as a player. And I think as a team, I, that's always what we're striving for. So I think now that the Olympics are moved to 2021, but we were kind of already focused on 2024 and how we're going to prepare and just um, compete so we can qualify for those games. So I think, yeah, it's definitely something we're looking forward to and already um, working towards. What's the one thing you're most looking forward to um, when you get to put on the USA jersey again? Oh my gosh. All of it, literally all of it. And I think this break puts it into perspective how much I miss field hockey. <laughs> um, I miss the competition. I, I told my teammates this before. I think I'm like addicted to the competition. <laughs> so whether that's winning or losing, and honestly, you, in all sports, you fail more than you win, but it's like that uh, chip on your shoulder, that like reason to go out there and like try that much harder. I miss that. And then I also miss like my teammates so much. I miss playing hockey every day. It's really tough sitting in the house. It's definitely been challenging um, with the whole situation that we're in right now. So just doing our best to stay fit and work out at home and get those skills in like whenever I can outside in the house. And um, so I think just being back with the team and playing hockey again will just be amazing. Danielle, thank you so much. That's Danielle Grega of the Team USA field hockey team. Once again, Ashley Hoffman, Team USA field hockey, the, the newest captain for 2020. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.